hey, if swearing offends you, just for this once, I think you just need to stop because I'm going to swear. Hey, my friends, a heads up to this, this episode. What am I going to tell you about? Well, I'm going to tell you that I am totally, totally pissed off with people who tell you not to follow your passion. Because that's bullshit. I'm also going to tell you, because this is really important, how to find your passion and to find fulfillment in your life. Whether that becomes a job or whether it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because I want you to find fulfillment in being here. That's it. So, yeah, there's a few swear words. I've already recorded this once before and I found... Well, I just thought it was a bit too sweet, too nice. So I've just recorded again, and I'm a bit more happy with it. So come follow me down this rabbit hole. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. Hey, my friends, welcome to the PDU, Personal Development Unplugged. And, well, today I've called this thing sort of passion, purpose, but who cares? And the thing is, I do care. And I would love you to get a hell yes out of this. Because what I'm going to talk to you about is a way of while well, finding your passion, not listening to the bullshit that goes around, and finding, well, the ways, the hows, because that's what people don't tell you, do they? They tell you all the stuff about how they've got it or how they haven't and how not to and how to do this. And I want to tell you about, about a few things, a few ways that you can start to experience, to explore, to find what your passion is, your purpose and how it can affect your life, or how a life can affect your purpose, your passion. You see, I've been reading a thing. You see, I've been reading about this thing called Ikigaya. It's Japanese. And it's a way to find your life's purpose. And I'm guessing, or my interpretation of that is to... I'll find the reason for existing if you want to live a life of fulfillment. You find your ikigaya. And ikigaya is a lovely thing. It starts off with sort of four principles. This is the way I understand it. I'm sure I've got it wrong, but this is the way I understood it. It's finding the thing that you love to do and then finding the things that you do well. Finding the things what people need and then finding the things that you can get paid for, for doing the things you love and the things you're good at, because that's what people need. And when you put those four together and you, the middle of those four circles, when they intersect right in the middle, that's your ikigaya, which I think is absolutely awesome. If you're looking for your passion to be your career, your job. Now, I don't get, I get that and I don't get it. I think it's a lovely thing and I'm exploring that type of thought in my head and in my journals and it's really taken me down lots of little rabbit holes. But it got me thinking, where did I find my passion? Because when I was at work doing in in another life, I call it another life, not doing this hypnosis stuff or not before hypnosis came into my, my little life, I was passionate about what I did. I enjoyed what I did. I was passionate about it, got paid for it. So, it, and it seemed to be that the people who paid me wanted it. And I evolved, I trained, and it was something that I went into without even knowing what I was getting into. And there's a theme going to come in, I'm just, I'm just noticing it, because I wanted to do art, and I went into the construction industry, because there was drawings. This person said, there's lots of drawings there, and, and, and you like drawings, so it's the same thing. And my first job was filing bloody drawings. (laughs) Never mind. But I got into that and I loved it. And then hypnosis came came along. I've told you the story of of how I wanted to learn NLP. And this wonderful man 
and told me, sorry, Paul, you've got to learn hypnosis first. And we had this lovely little conversation over a few weeks. And yeah, I relented, learned hypnosis. And for 21 years now, plus, it's evolved inside me, become a passion. And yeah, I've actually changed. At one time, this is what I did just for a living, doing hypnosis, hypnotherapy, training people. I do different things now. And it's like an e- it's evolution. And again, see, I stumbled upon hypnosis and found a passion. And in that passion, yeah, people were prepared to pay for me, pay for it. People obviously wanted it. But that wasn't the reason why I was doing it, but it helped. I would have done it anyway. Because just for me, being around people, and I wasn't a, per- a people person, and I'm a bit of an introvert, but when it comes to this, I'm an extrovert. And it just made sense to, to follow this little winding road of passion, to read up upon it, to practice it, to watch videos on it, to write about it, to talk about it and to work with people on it. And it just grew and grew. And I think that's the thing. We'll come, we're going to dive deeper into that evolution. Because I also want to just dispel a little bit about this thing. that There are loads of people that say, do not follow your passion. Well, you have to say that's the biggest piece of bullshit in the world. It's like, don't follow the thing you love. Now, I think what they're trying to say is, don't just think of passion as being your job. But these are the people who, when you look at it, they are doing the job that they're most passionate about. They love it. But I bet you what? What, Paul? What do you bet me? I bet you that they didn't start off with that in mind. What they're doing right now, this passionate thing, and the things they're passionate about, and all their stuff right now, They had it in their mind right way back because I know a lot of their stories and a lot of their stories are they were doing different things. And in fact, if they look back now, they go, oh, that wasn't the thing. It seemed to be the thing. I was passionate about it then. But sometimes circumstances made me pick this. And I was lucky enough to pick something that evolved into what I'm doing now. And now I'm enjoying the hell out of life. And I think that's the thing. Yeah, I know you shouldn't just throw your life away. I know a lot of people, when they come through our trainings, they go, that's it. I just want to be a therapist now. I just want to work with people, train people, do this. this." I'm giving up my job tomorrow. And we go, whoa. Think about it. Read about it. Do it planned. And if you still want to do it after a few months and you've done all your practice, yeah, fine. You start to, to follow that path, just as everyone else does in that path. But it's an evolution. But it do, does it have to be? Your career? Does it have to be your job? Does it have to be the thing that keeps food on the table for you? No, it doesn't. And I think a lot of people, if you see them, when they do just blindly follow their passion and say, This, I love doing this, therefore I will just make it my career. That's when that goes belly up because they haven't looked at other piece of that ikigaya. You know, what are people? Do people really want it? Are they prepared to pay for it and pay you for doing it? Is there a market out there? Is there a need, a want? Just because you like doing it? Maybe it's not. But the thing is, it shouldn't really stop you doing it, should it? Or something similar. And that's the thing. You see, let's forget about these people who go, because it's fashionable, by the way, to say, don't follow your passion. It's very fashionable. You're, it's, a, it's a different club. Let those people go for the moment because they've got some good stuff. Because the thing about it is they're passionate about what they do and therefore they are giving you 100% of what they do. So take what they're sharing with you because they are passionate. They've spent time learning it and now they're sharing it, which is awesome. But we get to the point where they go, but I don't know what to do or and we're going to work out on finding the bit to do, because I think that's the, whole, the main point. But one of the things I get, and you've read it before, possibly, they go, well, maybe you've said this. Have you said this? I haven't got time to do what I want. If only I had more time, then I'd do it. 
which again is BS, isn't it? And I'll show you how BS it is because I want you to do something. And if you, you may have done this before, it's pretty, it's, I did not invent this in one way, bit or other, but it's so obvious. I want you to write a bullshit diary. What's one of those, Cluffy? Well, I've called it the bullshit diary, but it's really just a log, a log of what you're doing over, say, the next seven days. Not the bit about going to work, going to the gym, reading, learning, doing stuff like that. It's that other stuff. I want you to log down on a daily basis. How much time do you spend in front of the TV? How much time do you spend on social media? And if you split them all up, if you wanted to, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. There's loads more. How long do you spend just surfing the net randomly? Like reading the news on the internet. Because then you get a spurious little picture come along. and you, Oh, I'll follow that. And another one, another one, until you're down that rabbit hole of bullshit. And be honest. Be honest. Just do it. Don't change your habits. I'm not asking you to change your habits. I'm just asking you to, just before you do that, look at your time. When you're finished, look at the time. And then you'll say some swear words. But you have to write it down and be honest. And then at the end of that week, Notice how many hours a week have you logged into your bullshit diary doing that stuff. Now, you might say, and I'm sure you will, as I spend time on Facebook, but I spend time on Facebook generally advertising this, this podcast, showing the episodes and things like that, or just sharing some nice stuff I've seen on, on YouTube. They're my two. But I know I've been derailed on YouTube because I'm looking for something particular, like that Higaya. And as I'm looking through, something else just catches my eye. And then the next one and the next one. It's a bugger. So we all fall for it. No one is exempt, I don't think, because there's some bloody clever people who've designed these algorithms to keep you on that platform. But the thing is, say you were to save one hour a day, just one hour, that's all. And I tell you what, you could probably treble or quadruple this, but if you just said one hour a day, that's seven hours a week, isn't it? That's 365 hours a year. It's crazy, isn't it? How many weeks is that? How many weeks is that spent that you could do something else? It's amazing. One hour a day. Imagine spending one hour a day of doing the thing that you love doing. How good would you get? You'd get bloody awesome, wouldn't you? And because the better you get, the more passionate you get, because the better you get, and because of that, the better you get, and because you're getting better, you fine-tune it. You get more subtle. You get to, because the foundations, and you, they're the difficult bit, that's that unconscious incompetence and then your conscious incompetence and then you get consciously competent but when you get all these hours going it becomes unconscious competence we've talked about those four stages of learning before and it becomes so good and then to become a master you want to go between the two top ones unconscious incompetence and co sorry <laughs> unconscious competence you don't want that one unconscious competence and the conscious competence, so you know how good you are, and you know what, how you want to develop it even more. And you'll probably, because of that, start to see opportunities that you can use this stuff. So wouldn't that be great if you did that? A bullshit log diary. Because I reckon you'd probably find two hours a day. Now, you might say, well, I can't always do this in the daytime because I'm looking at the day. Yeah, but you could do something. Just move things around because you can. Because if you've got time to do that in the daytime, then you've got time to think about the other stuff, to practice that other stuff. It'd be more than an hour a day. It really will. So that's, you know, we call it a bullshit diary because it destroys the bullshit that, of the excuse you've been giving yourself. I haven't got time. It's about making the best use of your time. But then you say, well, that's really good. 
but I don't know what to do it on. I really don't know where to spend my time. Now, maybe you do. And all you've got to do is that bullshit diary. I actually say, right, that's it. I will have 10 minutes a day to do those little things on the Facebook and things like that. See my friends, boom, boom, boom. The rest of the time I'm going to spend on my passion, the thing I love doing, and see where it takes me. I will deliberately schedule it out. I will think about it. I will commit to it. I will work on it. I'll explore it. And the job's done. But what happens? What happens if you, you haven't got a blooming clue? If you haven't got a blooming clue what you're passionate about, then this is all for nothing, isn't it? That's me having a cup of coffee. So, so that would be all for nothing, wouldn't it? No, not at all. You see, I've got a little way how you can begin to find out what used to float your boat that you've forgotten about. Because of all the things that have gone on and all that social media stuff has got in your way, hoodwinked you, put a fog in your brain. We're going to unfog it. Now you are going to need a piece of paper. You are going to need maybe your journal, whatever you like. And I know you're probably going to say, oh, bloody hell, Cluffy, I thought you were just going to tell me. Well, if I just tell you, how do I know? I don't know your brain. I don't know what's inside you. And if this is important, it's important to find, is it important to find the things that are important to you? The things that will make you feel so wonderful, fully passionate about whatever you do. Would that be important to you, to find that thing? To find the thing that, that will light up your life and when you finally leave this little mortal place, you can look back at yourself and say, I did a fucking good job. Excuse the F-bomb, but that's what it is. That's what you want to be saying. I know I want to be saying that at the end of the day. And I want to be saying, not just job, I want jobs in plural. And I want them as if there were satellites going around me, there'd be hundreds of them. So I think it's that important. It's certainly important to look, even if you don't find it, well. But you will, because there is no well. Because once you look, and you look with intention, you will find it. So here's the thing. How do you do this? Well, get a piece of paper. We know about mind mapping. You know I'm a mind map crazy person. Everything I do is a mind map. Basically, I start with that piece of paper. Ideally, I take an A4 pad, a book, an A4 book, open it up, and I've got A3. And in the middle, I write my subject, my subject title, and then my lines will go from there and the subsequent lines and things like that. Sometimes I'll leave a line that has nothing written on it to get my unconscious mind to think, fill it up, fill it up, and come with some answers. It's a little tip for you there. Leave a little, leave some openings for your unconscious mind to work on while it's working on this with you. But where do you look? So here's the first thing. I want you to go back to your childhood. And yes, I know when you think about childhood, for some people, childhood wasn't that great. But there were things that you enjoyed or you wanted to enjoy. Something that if you could have done it in childhood, you would have done because you just knew it would be enjoyable. It would have made you happy. Or you did some things that just made you happy. So you write in the center, things that I really enjoyed or was passionate about in my childhood and just allow your thoughts to come and write them down. Now, the thing is, these are done without completely non-judging, uncritical. You don't even know why you're doing it yet, other than to find ultimately the thing that will really float your boat. Now, for me, if I was doing this right now, I've done it in the past. The things that came to mind when, when I was a, a smaller kid, under a teenager, I used to be taken to, there used to be a market where people would sell, you know what a market is, they're selling stuff. And the, this one particular place, I used to hate going by the way, but there was this one store, one store that sold second-hand DC comics, Marvel comics, Superman, Batman. And it just attracted me like a light and a moth. Poof. And I would just want to hang around there. Oh, you, Mum, Dad, you go away. I'll, I'll still be here. I'll still be here. I thought, I'm sure the guy used to get really pig sick of me. And I would buy some. And then you could swap them as well. So not only would I just buy the ones next week, I'd bring them back again. I, and I just loved comics, those type of comics. 
And I think that's where my love of art started. Because I, lo- I still love that art now. I've got books that I bought books a little while ago showing the art of Superman, one of them. It's awesome. And one of the things I used to do was draw imaginary comics because what, or comic characters, because what I ultimately wanted to be was a, an artist for DC Comics, Marvel Comics, comics rather. Didn't get there, but I loved art for that. It's always there. And then I started to look at other things. Well, I enjoyed playing sport. I enjoyed, with, I enjoyed writing with a, with a pen doing special writing, old English writing and things like that. Just something that's, I don't know why, it just suddenly got to me. But it, if you see, there's lots of little bit of arty bits there and reading various books. A lot of them, I used to have great comic books. You won't remember this one unless you're my age-ish in the UK. There's one guy, a guy called Andy Cap, who was so politically incorrect, but it was great. And there was another one called The Perishers, about kids, a bit like Peanuts, basically but UK version. And I would just lose myself in that. They were real to me, real, more real than a cartoon, you know, movie cartoon, things like that. And then I got, got really into them. Just think about these now. It was, I used to love watching the Disney cartoons. I think that's what, where my love of Disney came from. Found out about him a lot later about his imagineering. But that was a love there. And so I, I would write all those things down. And I'm, again, I'm not even looking at these to think about anything. I just want to think and explore what I used to love as a child. And just do it. And you can put it down. Or I always suggest put it down for a few minutes as well. Go for your walk. Do the rest of your, your day job or whatever it is you're doing. If it's anything. And then come back half hour later. Fill up those empty lines. Because you will. Your unconscious mind will fill them up for you. Because all you have to ask the question is, hmm, I wonder, what did I really enjoy doing when I was a child? It'll come to me. Put it away, come back, it comes to you. Then, so you put that to one side, you've done one mind map. Get another piece of paper. It can be two A4s, better still. What did I love doing as a teenager? And these are all depending on how old you are now, but I'm assuming we're all a, a teenager or above. Do the very same thing in the middle. Things that really I really used to enjoy as a teenager. And just let your mind go back into those years. Because they were crazy years as a teenager. For me, I still love reggae music. Still love my drawings, my art. Still love those comics. I used to like squash. Okay, you know, the tennis type squash and things like that. I used to wear some crazy clothes, which I thought were absolutely the dog's bollocks. But all these things, and just write them down. Completely, as, as I say, non-judgmental, no comments. And just notice when you've done all that. And again, leave it, come back, leave it, come back. And then when you've done both, what I suggest you do is leave both for maybe a night. Just so if there's anything else to to germinate inside your unconscious mind to your conscious mind, that intuition. Then what you do is you come back to them and you look at them again. And you start to notice the feelings that they gave you. What type of feeling was it? And as you do that, you're asking yourself the question, what are the type of things that I could do now that would give me that same type of feeling? Feelings, I say it again, give me that same type of feeling in that sort of genre something similar, and notice. Again, just do it on another mind map. So it now becomes a bit of a brain dump. And I hate that term, brain dump, because we're not dumping anything. But we're basically getting our, what do we call it now, this integration, an integration of thoughts now, from the feelings you got from it, from being in your childhood, in your teenager years, and now your adult mind, as it was, can now Get that creativity from that, those two areas of yours. So you're no longer the adult. You're now getting all of it together and going, right, as an adult, these are things I've got. These are, I can bring all these things together. And you're going to find, I know you will, you'll find two or three things that you go, do you know what? That's a, even if you don't find the thing that you, you, your vehicle, that's what I'm trying to say. If you, 
you, you'll find a vehicle. But even if you didn't find a, ge- a vehicle, a vehicle, you know the feeling you're looking for. And that's when you can start opening up your vision into the things around you. That's when you're, you're spending your time useful on the internet because you're finding the information, the opportunities that will give you that feeling again. All you have to do is have the right intention. You know, get that curiosity as well. The intention to find the thing that's going to make you most passionate. Be really curious about it. What could I do? What would I do that would give me this? And each one you get, write it down for God's sake, just write it down so you don't forget it. But also, this is where the Disney part comes in. Visualize it. See yourself over there. Not going to do it here, but that's all you have to do. See yourself over there. See yourself doing it. Jump into you. Notice what it's like and then come back in. Just to let you know when you do this, the reason for coming, going out there is to make sure it's how you want it. reason for coming back is to make sure your unconscious mind knows that you haven't got it yet. Yet. Big capital Y-E-T. And that's the direction you're going. And once you've got that and you've honed, does it have to be one? Of course it doesn't. You might actually find that it's something you're doing already and you're just going to ramp it up. You might find There is a way that people have a need for this and would pay for it. Now, whether you do it as a side hustle and just ease it through, let it evolve. I think that's my biggest advice when you get all this, evolve it. Because if you jump at it too quickly, you're going to first of all miss some steps and probably trip ass over tip. But secondly, you're going to miss opportunities that come along. So as you let it evolve, if you think about my little story, I wanted to do NLP to, to be in that old construction business to make the most out of that. And it worked so wonderfully well there, but it evolved into so many different things. And the things it's evolved in, I couldn't be more happier with. So as you let it evolve, how do you do that? Well, you just find the baby steps that hold that feeling. But the thing is, you might think this is absolutely awesome, but I hope you feel it's absolutely awesome. Or you might just think, yeah, it's okay. Other way. But even if it's okay, it's got to be worth doing, isn't it? Because just listening to me and going, yeah, now I know how to do it. Well, you might know how, but if you don't do it, if you don't just spend, you know, you spend all the hours on, on social media, if you don't spend that one hour doing this, even if it took you an hour, the opportunity, the return on that investment is massive. So you can't not, can you? And that's when you start to schedule it. Because what I was trying to say there is, if all you're going to do is the intellectual bit, then, to be honest, you've just wasted the last half hour. Because knowing it without doing it is, to me, just a waste of time. And I want you to be able to use this. But that's up to you. You've got to take responsibility and do this. But the the benefit of doing this is immense. So you start to schedule it. You start to look at the baby steps. You allow it to evolve you might actually find there's so many different opportunities around for you. There's groups, there's people to talk to, there's people to model, there's people, and that feeling just grows and grows. Could be that you make a business for yourself. Wouldn't that be awesome? Doing the thing you love, doing the things that you're passionate about, but hey, you get paid for it. Or it could be that you find something that creates a service for others. Maybe they're not going to pay for it, but everything doesn't have to be paid for, does it? How much do you pay for this? Nothing. Hopefully you get something out of it. Think of all the people who do work for charity, selfless service. They're doing things that make them feel wonderful. And they're doing it for other people as well. So everyone gets the benefit of it. The whole planet gets the benefit of it. That's the ecology of all of this. Now, hopefully it stirred, stirred you up a little. It stirred me. I'm thinking already what I'm going to start to, to, to think about. Now, what I will be doing... I'm not going to do it now because this this is so much to take in. And also, I want you to do it. So when you click the pause button or the stop button, you actually commit and schedule time to do this. It's got to be the first thing you do. But there may well be, once you've gone all the way through this, you've decided, yes, you've got enough time. That was just bullshit. You've gone through the mind maps and you've found those places that light your fire 
and you've looked at it and thought, yeah, I, these are avenues I can, I can start to explore. It's a wonderful adventure. And when the opportunities come, I will just be taking them because that's when synchronicity starts happening. That's when coincidences start happening. And that's when biologically your, your unconscious mind uses a thing called the reticulating activating system and actually starts activating everything to, to focus on or seeing the things you're focusing on. So that's how the coincidence and coincidences and synchronicity happen. If it's not by the law of attraction, it's by biological means. Whichever way you believe, it works. And there's a tiny little thing at the end, though. You do all of that. You know now what is going to make you passionate. Generally, that takes you over the, over the tipping point and momentum builds. It's as if you start walking downhill and it gets faster and faster and, and it's as if you just can't stop. But there is one little thing that sometimes happens. We now know exactly what we're going to do. We know we've got enough time. We know we could schedule it, but we don't. Because a little voice in our head says, I don't deserve this. I don't, I'm not worth it. Who the hell am I to think that I can do this type of thing when other people aren't? Maybe my family, my friends, they're not doing this type of thing. And who am I to be better than them? I'm not good enough. Maybe I'll found out. Oh, I'll say that again. Maybe I'll be found out. That old imposter syndrome, which only happens when you're really starting to push yourself, by the way. All those things, those negative beliefs that start to chip away. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about next time, I think. Dealing with those negative beliefs. But I don't want to talk about them now, because if I talk about them now, guess what? You'll probably find one and then have to do it. We don't want that. Because I want you to find that tipping point that takes you just over the rise of that little crest of a hill or a wave. And then you get that momentum and you start doing the things you're passionate about. And one of the things you do is you write me a little email, say, oh, Paul, this is absolutely awesome. This is what I'm doing with my time. This is the, my passion. Because that's all I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you with your passions. If there is a belief that comes up, yeah, email me that too, and I'll definitely include it in that, that episode. But just do it. Just do it. What have you got to lose other than one hour of your life that you'll never get back, and it'll be one hour of your life that you'd have never got back anyway because you'd been on bloody Facebook or something like that? Hey, and that's why I want you to get, um, I wrote a swear word, but I want a hell yes. A hell yes from you, in your mind, for you. Because everybody is here on this life. For, just imagine if this is the only life we have. I don't know if it is. You don't know if it is. But if it was, that's the worst scenario. This is the only life we have. And we fuck it up because we don't follow our passions. We don't follow the mission. That we don't find the reason we're here. That would be such a calamity. Wouldn't it, Jane? <laughs> Even if your name's Jane, by the way, you're not calamity. I take that back straight away. <laughs> Why did that slip in there? I don't know. So take a moment right now. Well, not just right now, because I'm, I'm finished. But when you stop, and I'll remind you just before you stop, when you press stop, I love stopping and pausing. And I want you to stop and pause for maybe a minute where you can start to commit because you start asking yourself, what would it be like to find the, my passion? What would it be like to find the reason I've been put on this earth? What would it be like to fulfill my mission? And more importantly, what would it be like to live my life with total fulfillment? I'll remind you that at the end, okay? So you have to listen now to the very, very end, to all my stuff, all my my housekeeping stuff and everything like that right to the very end because you have to and then I'll remind you okay so now comes the housekeeping and I'll probably just sometimes I don't know what I'm going to say but I haven't got an idea because there's a few things that I'd really love you to do so listen to this important news flash as it were and then the final reminder because there'll be probably a little 
hypnotic command in there to get your unconscious mind juicing. And you wouldn't want to miss out on that, would you? Hey, so now some housekeeping. First of all, I'd like to thank all our sponsors. Well, they're you, really, because I haven't got any sponsors. We don't do sponsorship or things like that. So you're our supporters, my, my sponsors. And to do that, to do it in such a brilliant way, I would like you to restrict yourself to sharing this podcast to only about five to ten people a day. Yes, I know that you want to do it more, but just restrict yourself to five to ten people every day. Because that would be good if you share that, because things will grow. And people will get to learn better ways. They'll get to mine up the little golden nuggets of information that will make their life better. Secondly, now I know you want to go there straight away after doing the the sharing. You want to go to Paul Clough online, because you want to look at all those programs I've got, so you can see there are wonderful ways that you can become totally confident in yourself, to let go of anxiety, to create a mind palace in your mind, to relax so deeply, and stuff like that. So you'd go to paulcloughonline.com. And when you've done that, and I know you want to go straight away, but just, just hold yourself back, you'd probably want to then go forward slash podcast so it's paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast because you haven't yet signed up for those free 50 plus free hypnosis tracks i know that's what you want to do right now you've probably already got your finger on that subscribe button because you may have forgotten to subscribe to this podcast that's what you may have done because that is the sponsorship our sponsor your sponsor you are the sponsor and it's those things that that will allow us to grow and to just get better, hopefully get better. And I do hope you didn't mind the swearing in this episode. You know, I do swear at home and it just comes out. find it a little bit more natural. But I'll, I'll rein it in if you don't like it. Let me know, because all you have to do, any feedback about anything you like about this show, about the episodes, about the golden nuggets, about what you got, what you didn't get, what you'd like to get, just email me, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Dot com. Loads of stuff there. Play this bit back. Okay? And finally, you're just about to go, thank God, Cluffy, you're finished. Well, now, just as you put your finger to hover above that stop button, the stopping the play button, I want you to think to yourself and look around. Look around to find that quiet place. The quiet place that You can go inside for a moment and with your unconscious mind you can stop and pause and decide because I want your unconscious mind to give you all the motivation to find your passion, to find your passions, plural. Who said you've got to have one? You can have as many as you like. So just look around now and take 30 seconds just go inside and ask your unconscious mind when are we going to start looking for all these passions help me and your unconscious mind can do that now press stop Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.